Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies coming to you with our top five, well, America's whiskeys of 2015. Right. What does that mean? Well, yeah, you almost said bourbons, and that's when we first, we we're going to do a top five scotches, and we, and we said let's do a top five bourbons. Well, we can't do bourbons because we've got a Canadian in there, mm -hmm. and on Wednesdays we release our America's whiskeys. Right. There's some ryes that we really so, liked and stuff. So so this is basically the top fives this year, 2015, not this year, it's now 2016. In 2015, we began an extra review show on Wednesday. Right. We used to just do scotches on Saturday. And we thought, you know what, we're missing all these American type ryes and bourbons and things, even some of the single malts. And then we decided to include Canada and maybe even Mexico, if they ever come up with a whiskey. And we call it America's Whiskey Wednesday. Yes. So this is going to be our top five spirits from our Wednesday show. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Mm -hmm. So, because it's not, you can't say a bourbon. So, and it's only our show. So it's not like these are the best of ever. For the, It's what we had in 2015. Oh, yeah. So you've so, picked out your five favorite, and I've picked out my bingo five that we reviewed in 2015. Are they the same? Mm, we don't, I know. don't know. We haven't told each other. <laughs> so let's kick it off. Do you I want to start off? Yeah. I had to hide mine because I knew yeah. he'd be peeking. He's a he peeks. I'm a peeker. I like to peek. It's a height thing. I'm used to just being like, oh, what do you got there? So what's your number five? Number five, Crown Royal Hand Select Barrel. Ooh, really? Yeah. You call that the uh, HSB. That's the HS Crown <laughs> Royal HSB. Uh, as opposed to the Northern Harvest Rye, mm -hmm. which is the NHR, yeah. <laughs> which is what we're calling. Okay, so well, why? The, the hand select barrel is a little higher proof. It was uh, 50 or a little bit higher percentage. Mm -hmm. um, it was packed full of flavor compared to the other Crown Royals. Very smooth, mm -hmm. very good. Packed full of flavor. You didn't think the oh, Northern Scott Harvest Rye? Funny. I know, but you didn't think, you said compared to the other crowns, you no. didn't think the NHR? No, and even if you go watch the videos, there's a couple of them of the crowns that we did and including the Crown Royal Shootout, I point out I like the Hand Select Barrel better you totally than the do. Northern Harvest Rye. Right, and those two were the ones I missed, and they were the stronger ones, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think I missed them. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else you want to say on that? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a good pick. You like the bag that it comes in? I don't remember which one it was. I think there, that was like the, it, didn't it look like the coffee sack or something? Was that? Looked like it a, was. Yeah, that one. Like, yeah canvas it was like a canvas bag. Yeah, I can remember job. those facts. I don't remember. Yeah. And the pommel. Which one was the deer, or you thought was deer skin? That was the uh, Monarch 75th. Yeah. <laughs> See, I can remember that, but I couldn't tell you, like, your mother's first name. <laughs> My number five is from Corsair, which limits it to two. Because mm -hmm. we cover, covered the triple smoke. Me, oh. Well, we covered the triple smoke. And uh, I love Smokies, and it was in the forefront. But what happened with the rhyme again? You had to buy two bottles of it? I polished off the whole bottle before mm -hmm. we could review it. And then I bought another one and enjoyed that one so much, I had to beg Bruno to move the rhyme again up on the shooting schedule because it was in danger of going extinct. <laughs> so it is my number five, the Corsair Rhyme Again. There is something about this rye. I don't know if it's the chocolate malt that's in there. I, it's, I don't know. I love it. It's really good. And uh, Corsair does a lot of little experiments throughout a year. I'm intrigued. I want to try them. Well, I know we've had suggestions, too, to try the quinoa yeah. one. But quinoa? actually, that's, that's how it's pronounced, yeah. Quinoa? Quinoa, hmm. with the Q. It's, it's quinoa. Pinkwa is apple in Quin Chinese. Quinoa. I know, I'm pinkwa. just saying, oh, in Mandarin Chinese, pinkwa means apple. Ah. Just throwing that out. Now, we've had a couple of people point out that we need to do the, the quinoa. Originally, somebody had said it was not good. Huh. But, you know, different palettes are different. Sure. Yeah, everybody's different. So my number five, my phone cycle off, is the Corsair Rhyme Again. Okay. When you said Corsair, delicious. I thought you were going with the triple smoke. You know, I I don't know why. The Rhyme Again grabbed me by the throat and said, buy more. Mm -hmm. Buy more of me. Because I did like the triple smoke, and I drained that one about as quick. I probably need to buy another bottle of that, too. Hmm. You know what? We're, we've got a nice problem. Yes. There are bottles I want to buy again. But we're always buying new bottles for the show. I know. 
And I'm like a cult of the new guy with these bottles, yeah. but I want to sit there and say, well, I still want that one. Right. It's a good problem to have though. I mean, yeah. not, not complaining. All right. So do you want me to do my number four? Do you want to flip it back and forth or do you want to lead off each time or? I was going to go. Hmm. This one will surprise you, I'm sure. Hmm. Because I'm sure I know it's not on your list. The Crown Royal Purple Sack. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson's Groth finished. You know, we got a lot of views on that. Mm -hmm. I noticed that. And uh, that was early in the year that we reviewed that as well, wasn't it? That, um, yeah, I mean, it was probably the 10th or 10 to 15th. Hmm. Now, what, what about this the... whiskey that we reviewed? Okay. The fact it had that? come, it had been in casks from Napa Valley mm -hmm. or from um, one of the, the wineries out mm -hmm. there. The, well, Groth. Was Groth, the name. Groth right. is a winery. Yeah. Well, that and was And it had been in their door. Cabernet Sauvignon uh, cask. Well said, or, by the way. So, or, uh, the I don't world. think they call them casks. It's a, is it a wine cask? Wine I barrel? I think it could be. I don't know, but you got so, a good point. But it picked up enough of that Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. Boy, say that, that again. It makes you more attractive to me. It was delicious. And actually, I had uh, one of my friends that I was talking to and co-workers. He didn't even know we'd reviewed it, but he was telling me how that had become his mm. favorite. Mm. Um, it's got to be Don. Whiskey. Is that Don? Nope. Oh. I'm intrigued. I'll tell you okay. later. Tell me later. I thought for sure that'd be Don. All right. My number four, which will not be a surprise to you at all. You, you, right now, you could yell it. Yell it. Not a surprise. Well, I don't want to. I'm a shit. I've got I'm a shit. You tell me. I've got it I'm in my mind. I'll tell you if you. Wild can. Turkey 101. No, that's not what I was Boom. thinking. Okay. But that doesn't surprise me. No. And Wild Turkey 101 surprised me when I had it. The first time I had, I had Wild Turkey, first of all, I was committing a crime. Well, not really. I was in my house. I was 13. Mm -hmm. And my buddy Nathan and I, Nathan Decker, were watching a John Wayne movie. Yeah. <laughs> I said I was in my house committing a crime. What do you think, man? Oh, you're talking <laughs> like this summer when you got it. No, no, no. So you're like, oh, don't commit today. a crime. Don't commit a... No, no, no. Uh, we'd seen this John Wayne movie, and when my dad had turned 40, they'd had this huge surprise birthday party. All these church people were over, and Wild Turkey Bottle had been left behind. Hmm. And it was, I knew it was in a cupboard and it was marked with a Sharpie and everything, but we went and each had a shot of it. And I was like, oh, ugh. and that memory stuck. And so when we purchased it for the show, I still had that faint memory of being completely overpowered with a child's palate because we were like, how are these cowboys doing this? How do they shoot this yeah. whiskey? I can, yeah, I can remember my dad's bar too with the, and I can't tell you what kind, what was on there for sure. Mm. But yeah, we, I, I tried one of his, and I'm sure they were, most of them were bottom shelf whiskeys and w stuff and what, yeah, it was not good. Right. But I don't think I was 13. Right. I was 13. I was a little older than that. Yeah, I was 13. Now there's a part two to that story that I'll tell some other time that has to do with senior year, but we'll come to that on a whole nother show. But Wild Turkey 101, very pleasantly surprised. Uh, that alligator charring is where we learned that whole deal. Uh, it's been six years, and the cask, uh, it, was, it, was, it was just delicious. Hmm. Mellow and, and, and spicy at the same time. Now, so you also, the thing before. is, we had done, I think the first America's whiskey we done was Wild Turkey Forgiven, mm -hmm. which was a mix of bourbon mm -hmm. and a rye whiskey. Mm -hmm. And so... We liked it. You went out, you bought the 81, you bought the 101, you bought the select barrel, you right. bought the King Alexander, you bought the house, you bought the farm, you Boom. bought it all. Bam. Yeah, I, I became a convert. And, and for a while, I thought maybe you were getting paid. Yeah, I, I was still new. I bought this. Yeah, Meanwhile, we need to do wild, another wild turkey. Yeah, me and then I show up in my turkey. like wild turkey F-150. <laughs> Where'd you get that? I just like wild turkey. They did not give me a truck <laughs> with their logo. That didn't happen. And then I'm trailing a boat that's that's called the, 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 the turkey feather, the turkey beard. <laughs> no, that didn't happen either. Where are you getting all this? Sorry, that's all made up. That didn't happen. I got to point out, if you saw me looking around, I just noticed Bart's dog knocked over one of our lights. And yes. we stood it back up and we didn't even point it at us. 
It's still kind of, it's, it's got a cone. Kind of there, it's got a cone. <laughs> I mean, I think the cone is like pointing this. the other way. It's a little bit, but the cone is, is, is hitting our area. We look well lit when I look in the camera. All right, your number three. This one will surprise you too. This one's probably not on your list. Jay Riggers Kansas City Whiskey. Really? Yes. Now, my son is yelling, if, and then that's going to cause the dog to bark. Oh. So if you hear that, I think someone just had a nightmare or something. Oh. So if you hear some of that, I apologize. Or maybe they were shocked by your choice of number three. That could be. Could be. They were like, Jay. no! <laughs> they were like, no, don't do it! Jay Riggers. Um, <laughs> R-I-E-G-E-R-S. And I don't know what markets it's available in. Definitely Kansas City. Jay Riggers. In fact, is Mark Gillespie just reviewed it. Really? On, on Whiskey Cast. Hmm. Um, Jay Riggers Distillery was a casualty of prohibition, mm -hmm. if you remember. Mm -hmm. um, out well, of I wasn't business. around back then. Well, no, but as when we reviewed it, what we had on it right. then. And 18th Amendment to the Constitution, repealed by the 21st. Very good. Just throwing that out. So, uh, many years later... Uh, Jay Riggers comes back into business. They've started producing whiskey again. Um, it's in the thirty to forty dollar range, but the flavor that you get with it, and it's got a, a there. It's a corn. It's a. I want to say it's a rye, and it's a barley, hmm. if I remember right. Trifecta. And they also add a little bit of sherry to it. Not from a sherry cask. A little sherry is added to it. Hmm. It was delicious. Hmm. Very interesting. My number three. Primarily because a little horsey on top <laughs> is Blanton's. Yeah, I love Blanton's. Well, when you said your number four and you wanted oh. me to guess it, that's what I about you thought blurted Blanton's? out. Of. Sorry. So I, I, didn't, yeah, I knew it'd be on your list. Oh my God. It's in like a little hand grenade bottle. Okay, like a World War One hand grenade looking Baltov cocktail bottle thing with a little iron horse on the top. And I do have collectible sensibilities. And when he told me, you told me there's like 12 different horses in running modes for half a second What's, i thought i need more it's one for each letter of blantons because oh. if people buy them to spell well, out it's definitely blantons, like 12 and then they make a little display that thing for it seven. for you to put them in wow yeah you told me that and for a half second i thought gotta have that <laughs> i need to have that because there's a part of me that says "Ooh, i'm a completist and then i thought no i don't really need that so <laughs> yeah. but the juice inside Love it, love it, love it. Now, it's a premium juice. I mean, you you are paying for it, but it is good. It's got a solid history to that it. I don't think, I mean, it's not even, I mean, it's, it's 50 crazy, to $60 right, range. But it's up there. I, I'll be honest with you. There's work. For, I mean, there's higher price. Oh, yeah, yeah. But usually if I'm spending that much money, it's on scotch. I'll be honest with you. That's my scotch mm. range. I'll drop that on a scotch, no problem, on a bourbon. I'm going to hit you with a Wild Turkey 101 running at $26, and it's so good. I mean, I have a hard time you know, doubling up, you know, for something that I don't, it's great, but I don't think it doubles up the flavor, mm. if that makes sense. So love the Blantons, love the flavor. I will tell you, I think the Blantons came early in our reviews. Did it come before the Wild Turkey? Mid, mid I think way. it did. No, it was after, huh? okay. it's after the Wild Turkey. But it, the Blantons was definitely, when I had that, I thought, huh, this could go head to head with some of the scotches. When I sit down and say, I want to have a drink, I generally lean scotch. Like if you and I were, you know, if I had a 20 year work anniversary, it's going to be scotch. Yes. But there was a shot where I thought, you know what? Blanton's might be in the run for that if I was in the mood. Hmm. And that was the first time that it happened. So my number three, Blanton's. You'll see to me the Blanton's was okay, but it wasn't. It's not that. And I know it's a different. You palette. gave it a lot of people. Too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I remember you were like, here. Keep it. You like it. I was like, what? Yeah. Because <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. It wasn't even I'll totally okay, full. But... And I almost covered it for a while. And then I'm like, nope, drink it. And I just killed it. Yeah. Sorry. I know, and some people love it. Some people, I mean, I think everybody pretty much will tell you it's a good bourbon. Yeah. Some people tell you it's the best. Some people tell you it's not the best. You I'm know, on, I, don't, not I don't get good. into any arguments on it because, again, palates are different. Yeah. Drink it the way you want. Boom. <laughs> Two. You're up. Amador. Yes. That Amador. was on my, uh, if I had a six, mm. I probably would have been there. Would have been in there. Maybe. Yes. Once again, and I'm back at Napa. Exactly. Kind of like the uh, Jefferson's Groth, the Amador has been in, and all they say is Napa Valley wine barrels. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I picked up, I thought maybe it was kind of a white wine, it was a lighter grape or a white grape hint that I was getting with it. Yeah, um, you did real good. That one surprised me. When you handed me that, I had low expectations. It looked good in the bottle. And I thought, ah, they added caramel coloring. Nice packaging, maybe they did, nice but the, color. Think, but I don't think they did. I don't think so. I mean, you can't, I can't necessarily tell. Now, it was one, It was. it's made in Kentucky, and it's uh, transported somehow <laughs> That's right. to California. I think you said transported by bicycle. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah. You did a foot walk in your face. Go and watch it, that video. That's it's put in the Napa Valley uh, wine barrels. It picks up just a hint of that wine in there with it. Mm -hmm. um, and really, that's the same with my scotches. I like some of the different, the port caskings, uh, the sherry casking right. stuff that we do with scotches. The you mm -hmm. like has the port yeah. in it, right. Yeah. So Definitely. Good call on that. That one was, when you loaned me that to try, it was with several other bottles, and it looked good. And I thought, eh. Eh, let me try that and get that out of the way. And then I got yeah. stuck on it. And that it was the one I had a few more on you, on your dime, than I probably uh, should have on that one. Eh, I know, because eh. I was like, wow, I need to hide this bottle. I hit it. And I think it's $40 range. Okay. Look, we haven't well, really been that. discussing price on everything we've talked about. No, I think it's in the, no, I think yeah, it's $40, 45 But our top maybe. fives, the prices, unless it's mm -hmm. some crazy price. Well, my number two is the Crown Royal NHR, the Northern Harvest Rye. Here's the deal. I came into this. This is one of those deals where um, under promise, over deliver. All right? It's a little marketing deal. I We picked that up along with a bunch of other Crown Royals. There was a sale going on. And I said, let's get them all. They're on sale. You know, we can buy a batch and, and parse them out. We then parsed them out amongst ourselves. You got the Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye. We're over at your house. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch a movie. Boom, I'm thinking, you know what, I can, I'll watch it. Usually when, when I, we've talked about this, when I'm tasting, you're tasting, I'm sitting down, it's a little bit cerebral, just because we're doing the show and I'm making notes and I'm really paying attention. Usually I'm not going to try to write notes while I'm watching a movie. But I did not expect much from the Crown Royal, especially the least expensive of the ones we bought at $22. I poured this out. Uh, into a glass, you put on the movie, and I take a sip, and I was like, what? Boom! I was like, what? And you were like, what? What? Something wrong? Something wrong? I was like, oh my God, this is good. And you're like, come on, man. And I was like, no, I'm telling you, this is phenomenal. And you're like, get out of here. And I'm like, you got to have some now, right? Didn't I gush? Oh, I yeah, gushed. you did. Yeah. And I was shocked. I was really shocked about how flavorful it was. I mean, it's just that under promise over... Oh, wait, Right? Under, under promise over deliver deal. Phenomenal. Just phenomenal. So, number two, we did a review on it. Dog's going to scratch right as I'm talking. But she's interested. And uh, the review... And literally, the dog is scratching. That's not... Yeah, that's not code. Code or anything. <laughs> no, and then the review was funny because what do we have? Like 180 views? And then it suddenly gets... We were... We were at 270 views. Right. 270 and... views, that's great. That's fine. 270 people watched the deal. And then all of a sudden, it gets Whiskey of the Year. Jim, for, Jim yeah. Murray voted it Whiskey of the Year for, for 2015. 2015. Boom, and it's at almost 3,000 views. We, we were lucky we were on the front end of that. We had a review. It had been out for a few months before that. Now, my, my take on the Crown, three on months, the Northern three Harvest Rye, it's okay. It's good. Mm. Um, Usually, you, but it's Jim Murray agree. There, I mean, there's so good. many others that we tasted. Good. That's good. Full, full, chock full of flavor. I mean, I mean, it's it's, it's worth it. It's not all that. Canada, the whole country of Canada sold it, out in three minutes. That's because Jim Murray said it was the best whiskey in right. the world. And I kind of made up. I've already said my piece on out. that. The hand select, the hand select <laughs> barrel is better than that. That's it's my good. piece. It's the good. hand select barrel is better it's good. than that. It was good enough that once again, even though we had the bottle review, Scott had it. I went and bought my own bottle. And it wasn't mm. even on yeah. sale anymore. Yeah, $29.95. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And, I was no, like, it, and it is worth it. It's good. It's just there's better whiskeys to me. I still prefer scotch over it. To me, it's that under promise over deliver. I think they snuck that in, and that was one of the deals. I was like, whoo, and I knew what it was. You know, I mean, a lot of people are tasting it and going, oh, okay, okay, you know, or, or you blind taste it and a bunch of other stuff and go, wow, that's really good. But uh, 
I don't know. That's what did it for me. So that was my number two. What's your number uno? Now, I know your number one is, is one of two whiskeys. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and mine is one of those two whiskeys. Too, I think I you could probably pick my. And I know one. Uh, my number one is the George Stag Buffalo Trace Antique mm. Collection 2015. Yeah, that was good. Version at 69.1 percent alcohol right. was by far the best bourbon I've ever had. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm, I've got it at home, and I'm afraid to drink it. Because I want it to last. See, I'm going to be much more pedestrian than you. Well, let's, well, let's go. Okay, so you're not. You didn't pick that. No. But just to continue on about it, if you this is the the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection um, is put out by Buffalo Trace, of course, each year. And there's five whiskeys that are in it. You have the George Stag. There's a Weller's. Um, there's a Sazerac Rye. Mm -hmm. um, there's another Weller. And I forget what the fifth one is. Mm -hmm. But the buff the uh, the George Stag was the strongest one that they put out at sixty nine percent. They claim eighty four percent of it was lost to evaporation, and that Stolen. very very Stolen. small very small amount was left. And when you see it, the color of it, it's so rich. It's about fifteen years old, if I remember. Mm -hmm. um, it's it brought so much color of that wood into it, and it's just chock full of all the bourbon flavors that you love. If you get a chance, and it's very limited, I'd like to know how many bottles were out there. Some are guessing under 2,000 bottles. But if you ever get a chance to try it, do it. See, that's part of the deal I don't like about it is, is the, the, oh, it's so limited, you know, oh, you got to get it. And that really drives people. Oh, you know, that whole, I can't have it, I want to have it. I gotta have it. Same reason I think people say Cuban cigars are better. It's because you can't have it. Ooh, look, I got a Cuban. By the way, now, now they'll be able to get them. So to me, I think that drives up that deal. I'm telling you, I'm way more pedestrian and my number one, and it, it got well, this. Before you go though, just okay. based on that one, what you said, and I tried it, um, I did it with your, with the Brook Lottie Black Arts when you got it. I mm. came into it open-minded. I'd heard good things. You'd told me how good it was. And yeah. I thought, okay, I'm just, I'm tasting the juice. Mm -hmm. I'm judging for myself. Right. And I took a sip and wow. Right. So the same with the George Stag Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. When, as soon as it hit my lips and was smothering the taste buds in my mouth, <laughs> I knew... It's uh, and in fact is I didn't even know that much about it when we got it. Right. That was in fact is our liquor store had got one bottle in, yeah. they set it aside, asked I if we I wanted the show. it. And I yeah. said, of course. So right. I took it, tried it, and then I started it was so good I started doing some research to find out more about it. And that's when I learned really about the Buffalo Trace antique collection. Now, likewise with the Blantons and the, how everybody talks up the Blantons and how good it was is I don't agree. So, I mean, I don't buy into the, this is so rare, it's so good, you got to have it, and you're going to love it. I'm, I am still give a unbiased. Yeah, yeah, I'm not claiming. I'm telling you what my. I'm saying the, the public at large, I think, you know, oh, oh it's rare, well, not yeah. you. Right. Not you, but the public at large is like, rare, I got to have it, I got to have it, I must have it. And I'm like, come on. Same deal with the people that won't, they get it, and then they won't even crack the bottle and share it with a buddy. Heck, yeah. you sent some to Whiskey Lassie. To Joanne. Yeah. Joanne, you sent some out. You're like, here you go. And I was like, that's awesome, man. You're great on that. You're like a wonderful whiskey ambassador. I just talk a lot. <laughs> Without you here, we're like half the ambassadorship of what we could. Heck, we're probably a quarter. We'd only be a quarter. You're like 75% of the whiskey fabric. Hmm. You're great. The way you share stuff, because you're like loving it, loving it. And then you hmm. shared, and you shared a lot. You sent like, well, she also, 100 milliliters. No, she got she got a, <laughs> a good scotch that she likes. Oh, to. she sent us that ton 1509. Yeah, she sent us the, the ton 1509. All right, so here's mine, pedestrian. I feel like it's an, uh, it's, it's underwhelming. The Woodford Reserve. Oh, no, you didn't. Yeah, no, no, I, I didn't go up scale. I didn't yeah. go up scale. I didn't go ultra rare. Mm. Um, the Woodford Reserve gets it for this year because it is the bourbon I tried and went, huh, I got it. To me, it it signifies what bourbon is. Um, I, I lean towards scotch and I lean towards smoky scotches. 
Bourbons, I'd, I'd had a few. I'm like, okay, that's good. But I, if given the choice, I wouldn't have it over a Laphroaig. I would go, you know, Laphroaig or this, Laphroaig. All right, and then along came the Woodford Reserve. Right around the Kentucky Derby, I got it because they're like, hey, it's got their special Kentucky Derby bottling. I thought, okay, that looks cool, look good on camera. I expected, again, very little. Hmm. Had it, and I thought, this could be a daily dram. Come home from work, have an ounce. Hmm. Love it. It's flavorful. It's oh, but have an consistent. Ounce at work. No, no, not at work. No, until I, until I go home. rock star. Yeah. Once the once exactly. the beard's in full time and they're like, yeah, or we're getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this show, then we'll have one at work. <laughs> That's when we'll do it. I do get envious of some of our Twitter followers that are tweeting out pictures. They're at work and they're oh. showing the bottle they got there doing yeah. whatever. Lawyers. Or yes, I was going to say I was in know. an attorney's uh, yeah. office and uh, he had a what? much cooler looking bar. It was like a bookshelf for law books. But a quarter of the shelf space was filled up with scotch bottles. I'm mm. like, now that's a cool law library you yeah. got there. And he goes, oh, yeah, and when we win a big case, we'll mm. pop this one. I'm like, shut up. Yeah, right here at work, shut right up. in the office. I need to switch jobs. I'm going to law school. Yeah, we just won that case. Crack I don't care if bottle. I can get any clients. We're just going to law school, get our degrees. We can open up an office and just drink at work. <laughs> There you go. There's the Scotch <laughs> Test Dummies plan right there. We're going to put out our shingles. We're going to spend a lot of yeah. money to go to yeah, law Yeah, we're going to have Esquire on there Get just the so degree. we can be drinking at work. Drink at work. Hey, what are you, what doing? you doing? We're Esquires. You want a glass? You got a phone call. No, yeah. we actually, we don't hmm. take clients. What? No clientele? What are you I talking about? Who's court. calling us? Can't go to court. We can't go to court drunk. unless it's in walking distance. <laughs> unless there's a judge that likes yeah. Scotch. Come on over. We got a great bar. All right, so there's our uh, one through fives. See, you don't like you didn't like my choice of the George Dad because it's too oh, no, rare. I liked, it. I liked it. I think it's a great I like choice. It. I didn't think I don't think the Woodford Reserve is that. I mean, it's okay. No, first of all, I, I like your choice. I think you, whatever you that, want on your list is great. I think there's a lot of hoopla because it's so rare, and I think there's a lot of theft. <laughs> is what I think's going on, yeah. or bottles that have been squirreled away. Now, the only thing you didn't mention in that in that dialogue though was the Van Winkle line, the Pappies. Well, and actually, we have a bottle. A we wall. have a bottle of twelve year that we'll be reviewing coming up soon that did not fall into the twenty fifteen. True, it'll be in twenty sixteen. So, so we'll see that. what it is as the twelve year uh, lot B. Hmm? Van Winkle. Oh yeah. See, I just. So, I don't know. I guess the, uh, the the running crowd, the rushing crowd, the people queuing up and lining up. Would you line up for Crown Royal Northern no. Harvest Rye? No. no. Uh -uh. Those people no. were selling out. Like, oh, I gotta have it, gotta have it. <clears throat> no, no. What you know, and what's still weird to me about that though is that the Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye we bought in July. Mm -hmm. In the states, it and it's just now in about mid December became available in Canada. Mm -hmm. I don't get that. I mean, I guess maybe all the regulations with well, they do have the uh, what do they call it? The uh, their government their government store, the yeah, government LCBO. Store, that's it, the LCBO. Good recall. That was awesome. <laughs> Once I don't what's it stand for? Carrying the show. I don't know. I'd call it the pommel. It yeah. Stands for the pommel. <laughs> like they're keeping you down. <laughs> I know a lot of them like it. I hear they get a lot of good. They, I think they regulate zone. pricing and stuff though too. Yeah, don't they? I think so. So the, you don't have anybody selling the stag for five hundred dollars yeah. or whatever. And I did see it. Actually, I did see it going back to the Van Winkle the pa and the Pappies. There was a liquor store, a liquor store online, twenty three year Van Winkle for two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Now that's not right. See, I'm a That's not retail. Retail is like two hundred dollars. Yeah, but they're it. not forced to pay retail to a certain amount. I'm, I believe in free market. So, yeah, I mean, but if that's someone's just, willing to pay for it, what's the difference in putting it up on auction? Now, we have not gotten any little sample bottles yet, but I do know there's been people that have gotten little sample bottles that are reviewers, and then they sell those. That's wrong. Yeah, that yeah. is wrong. Um, I mean, if you get something in review, you are to review it. Yeah. So, um, 
But I think if you're a liquor store, let's say you got a case of something in. Let's say it was the Sullivan's Cove French Oak 2014. Same rush happens on the Sullivan's Cove. Let's say you you, you liked it. You're a you're a uh, liquor store owner, and you're like, you know what? I like that personally. I'm going to suggest that to my clientele that like whiskeys. Give me a case. You know, nobody else is buying it. I'll, I'll, give me two cases. Boom! It suddenly goes crazy because it's named Whiskey of the Year. So you jack up the price and sell it for a thousand dollars to take advantage well, of people. It be a thousand. That's free market. Well, free market is whatever the market could bear, whatever people would buy. I'd probably double it. And I'd be like, you know what? Bruno bought two bottles of that when I was selling it for 50 bucks. You came in after it's whiskey of the year. That's 150. Yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> I don't think it's wrong. That's, that's wrong. As long as the market can bear it, man, that's uh, supply and demand because you know the supply is going to be gone. What would be the difference if I saved my two cases? And it's now the year 2016. Nobody has the 2014 French oak. That's, that's the Solomons, reason. And you go, hey, look what I got. The and they go, oh, people are, I'll That's pay, the reason I'll people pay. are lining them up in line, though, and mugging each other and starting fights. Because well, they the did that over the Cabbage Patch that. Kids during Christmas, like when I was in 1984, too. I mean, that's, you know. Right, let's go. Okay. Sorry. Did we digress? Yes. All right. I was going to say scotch it. Should I still do that? Sure. Scotch it, you scotch gods. Cilantro. Dummies. Dummies.